Hi, it's Mike here again at uh, Software Craftsmanship North America. I'm sitting here with Sandra Mancuso. Mancuso, excuse me. Um, Sandra and I interviewed last year. Uh, Sandra was one of the first interviews I ever did with Uptastic, or amongst the first. Um, and he runs the London Software Craftsmanship Group, or you, you, you're affiliated with with the team that runs the Software Craftsmanship mm -hmm. Group. But when I first sat down to interview you last year, I was uh, had just launched the idea of Uptastic, and it was just basically focus only on user groups. And now this year, it's grown to be user groups and tech conferences, and then also the people that, that are interested in it, speakers, authors, um, uh, uh, FOSS developers, mm -hmm. and community influencers, which is my wild card for people that are interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it sounds like, you know, London Software Craftsmanship Group has also grown. Mm -hmm. you know, so what I've been doing is grown, and what you've been doing sounds like, from what you've described, it's grown quite a bit. What what is the state one year on of, of London software craftsmanship? Yeah, I think that when I spoke last year, uh, we had about 420 members. Uh, one year later, we I checked this morning, I think that we have 860. Holy uh, cow. Yeah. And uh, also last year, we were, we were trying to figure out how we would deal with 400. <laughs> And so we were to yeah. 800 and, and then, then all of a sudden things went out of proportion. Uh, so we tried to have more meetings, we decided, uh, I think that I said that last year that our plan was to uh, have more meetings instead of making our meetings bigger. Right. Because... Uh, when you say bigger, what does that mean? For example, uh, our round table meeting, uh, it was limited to 35 people, but mm -hmm. we have... 40 people on the waiting list. Okay. Uh, so so that's, I, that's actually 70 people. You said you have 30 that attend and then 40 still on Yeah, the and then, so, so there's always this massive waiting list uh, in the meetings that we were running. And so it was clear to me that either we would make the meetings bigger uh, or have more meetings. Right. And we chose the, the latter. So, so how many meetings do you have a month? So now we have five meetings a month. Holy cow. Yeah, and we decided to make them very different from each other. Because another thing that we noticed is, was that not every person feels comfortable mm -hmm. in a hands-on session, or not every person feels comfortable on a group discussion, mm -hmm. or in a social environment. So we wanted to provide different types of meetings mm -hmm. uh, in the evening, in the morning, so we could satisfy the majority of our members okay. one way or another. But so you're trying to respond to what the needs of the group are and, and, and so. provide different forms, formats mm -hmm. for, for different... That could include everyone. Mm -hmm. that, that they, they feel at least once a month yeah. there is a meeting that they feel very comfortable to come along. Uh, so, so that, that was... And one thing that we decided to do is that we, we kept the promise of the first year to never have any technology-specific meeting. So every single meeting that we have, even their hands-on sessions, mm -hmm. they are always, always language agnostic. Oh, really? Yes. So, so you, you, your focus truly on techniques, not Indeed. necessarily yeah. uh, this is Ruby, this is yeah. JavaScript. Yeah, uh, London has a very uh, rich uh, ecosystem of communities like Chicago mm -hmm. does. Uh, so every time that we feel the urge of running a Java session, there is a Java community for that. So we yeah. direct that to the Java community or to the Ruby community. Mm -hmm. But in the Craftsmanship community, I don't want to alienate a single member. I think that Regardless which language they use, regardless which level of seniority they have, they should feel welcome to come along. Mm -hmm. It makes it harder to organize, mainly the, the, the hands-on session, but that, that's what we, we decided to do. And it has been very successful. And so when you have, you, obviously the group is getting a little bit older now, and one of the things I've heard about is uh, from other organizers is how to keep, as, as people have been in the group longer, um, they, their experience level increases so a lot of times the topics are a little bit more entry level so mm -hmm. they lose interest and move on but how do you deal with that in such a large group? That, that's just a very interesting question because I remember one uh, once we ran our hands on session then we went to the pub as we do in England mm -hmm. every session so this guy came along and said I, f I found this session today very easy mm -hmm. right and I said to him the session was not easy you made it easy for yourself because you came to the session with your default toolkit right. and you used that. So for example, if it was easy for you to do in C-sharp, why haven't you done that in Clojure? 
right. or why haven't you used a different framework? Yeah. Or, so, so, so there's always something you can be a beginner in. Uh, absolutely. So, mm -hmm. so if it's something that you know, so there's no point in doing that. So do something different. Challenge yourself. The session is there as a structure for you to right. do whatever you want. Kind of like with the code yourself. retreats. You exactly. Go in and, 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 and flex a muscle that you don't use very often. Exactly. If you've done the, the, the game of life 100 times in Java, start doing closure. Right. Right. Start in doing other language. Mm -hmm. So push yourself. So, so I always say that to people. And I think that doing that, then they are finally with this mentality and then everything is okay. And last year, you, we, we, you did a few different things. You, had, uh, you described that you were starting a mailing list. Mm -hmm. um, what what did you where did that go? How has that been since? Uh, last year? Yeah, we tried to have a global mailing list uh, for all the the community organizers that we met here at SCNA mm -hmm. uh, Europe. It didn't work out well. Yeah, uh, no one contributed, including ourselves. Yeah, so I, I I joined it, mm -hmm. and then within a few weeks, I was in. I I have to say the what what kind of it wasn't. There's was nothing wrong with the format. Well, I should say, not the formula. There's nothing that anybody did wrong, at least consciously or, or intentionally. Um, it was just that I was in a place myself, and I think a few other people, we're, we're, we're social. And having a mailing list all felt yeah. kind of wrong because it was like, it was a closed thing. It was, mm -hmm. it was almost like feeling like, oh, this is just for the organizers. Mm -hmm. And it was like, ah, oh, why don't we just do it in the open? And, exactly. and, and so... You know, I, I don't think I, this is no slight to anybody. It just, it just wasn't natural feeling. Yeah, I think that it was a, like an attempt to bring mm -hmm. all of, uh, all of us together. Right. Uh, didn't work. So that means that this year we need to figure out something, something yeah. to, 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 to do. You know, we, but we need to integrate. We managed to do that uh, well in Europe, uh, but we don't use any tools. But mm -hmm. we are very close to each other. Uh, but it's still there is this big gap between the communities in US and communities in Europe. We are not aware of the communities in US, all of yeah. them, and you guys are not aware of our communities in, in, in Europe. So if we need well, there's, there's even in the US, there's, there's mm -hmm. gaps between, uh, even, even within the same geographic region, there's mm -hmm. gaps. It's a little bit more insular. Uh, and that, that does uh, bring up, you were working with a few different groups. Um, I remember that there was... Um, uh, a Germany group and, a, mm -hmm. and a pair of, I believe a Paris craftsmanship, Paris software craftsmanship yeah. group. Uh, do you know <clears throat> where, where they are? Absolutely. Uh, that's what we decided to do for our second year because we had a, a quite good first year mm -hmm. and we thought that we could do more. And do more meant that we wanted to see more craftsmanship communities in Europe. And I was traveling around going to many conferences, speaking mm -hmm. conferences, all this kind of stuff. And every single conference that I was talking, uh, I was saying, I want to go back home and knowing that at least one of you in the audience, mm -hmm. you want to start a craftsmanship community here. Right. And I, and for my surprise, people were interested and they came to me. And then we, we shared ideas and we told them how, they, how we were doing, what we were doing, and then we kept this contact going on emails and helping them. Mm -hmm. And, and they, all these communities were formed in, uh, in Europe very connected to us because that's how the seed was planted by us right. and and then there is this uh, conference in germany the software craftsmanship conference uh in germany that's been running for two years and they are and this year they reserved some of the spaces for the communities in europe okay. so we could get together so the, so it was intentionally we're gonna we're gonna keep some space open so we can bring people exactly so, so they opened uh a few spaces for some of the communities in europe and then they open to the general public. Oh wow, that's very cool. That so it's awesome. it's a, it's a very collaborative and very much. Yeah. Hey, we're all in this together. Exactly. Let's let's take care of each exactly. other. So, well, so 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 yeah. So now I think that in Europe, because we know each other, we go to the same conferences. We the communities they were creating the same model. Mm -hmm. uh, so so we are far more well connected. Okay. Well, thanks again for catching well, my up. My pleasure. And hope pleasure. Uh, for, hopefully we'll catch up again next year. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you.